kind of like a literature review of uh, the characteristics of, I'll be honest with you, like what's going on today. It's very controversial um, for many people. It was kind of like a personal journey for me. Um, so I'm going to talk about a little bit about my thoughts going into this and how my thoughts changed after doing this research. So um, it's kind of like a transformative experience. So first I want to go over a little bit of the context because there's a lot of misinformation out there about uh, Syrians and you know I'm sure some of you have heard about what happened with Arab Spring started in 2011. Okay, so let's look at it in context. Um, so, uh, civil war over uh, President al-Assad. Okay. Um, it started off as a war for people for or against Assad, but I want to put it into a little bit of context. Oops. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, there's a lot of key players that I think a lot of people don't realize uh, they're getting into the fight. Um, we have the regime, the Assad regime, Hezbollah, which a lot of people get surprised about. Uh, okay, and then, you know, the Russia's in the mix too. Okay. And of course ISIS. Right? So the regime, uh, you know, uh, the, it's a sect of, uh, you know, Muslim group, the Shia. And then Hezbollah is also a Shia group um, that supports Assad. Okay. And then you have uh, Al-Qaeda is there. They haven't they haven't left. Okay. Um, and then you have the so-called the, the Syrian opposition groups. So you have, so this is the most recent map of who's in control, who's fighting. So uh, just to give you a better idea of, of what the civilians are going through there, it's, it's really hard. Um, and uh, I just wanted to show this because, you know, all people really hear about uh, is ISIS. It's what people hear about, but it's very complex. A lot of infighting going on. Let's go back to this. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, you've all seen all the videos out there um, in the news. Uh, people have suffered beatings, torture, murder, interrogations, um, chemical warfare. Snipers, sexual assault, again, chemical warfare, it's just those two things are just really prevalent. A lot of people, um, it just seems like we just hear about ISIS. Everybody's so focused on ISIS and what they're doing. Um, and uh, uh, for some reason, when I talk with all my, a lot of uh, just people out there, I, I, it seems like they have a negative opinion on both ISIS and Muslims in general. And after talking about this at length with several friends and professors, I realized that I had a problem with it too. I had to confront myself. Um, and uh, it's interesting because Syria was originally a receiver of refugees from Iraq. Okay, now, now they're exporting a lot of refugees. So they did a 180. Um, so, uh, more than 4.5 million people have fled Syria since 2016. Uh, 12 million people need assistance in Syria. Um, so, it, they're in a world of hurt. Okay, I'll put down here. I don't know why I went back to this. Let's skip this, sorry. Okay, so let's look at the breakdown of migrants. I'm focusing on Syria because uh, uh, it's getting a lot of buzz talk right now with the elections going on right now. Uh, you know, we have a lot of, you know, we have Trump talking about it, um, Clinton talking about it. Um, it's, it's a really serious issue, but I want to focus on um, um, Syria yeah, specifically just because it's what you hear about a lot. Um, and uh, when you look at a lot of the internet forums, which I think are horrible to look at, but it's, it's, uh, some people talk about, uh, you know, fanaticism um, and uh, very, uh, you know, I, I would say uh, not very balanced views. And uh, the general public of America are, are, they have to look at themselves in the mirror and uh, 
realize that they're just as bad, um, if not worse, than um, uh, the, the people that they're criticizing. And they're lumping Syrians with ISIS, and I've even heard of, of words thrown out there like barbarians, uh, 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 uncultured, sexist. So I wanted to just l really look into that and just pull out the facts. Okay, I wanted to cut through all the BS uh, that I have to admit that because of all because of all the barrage of news reports that we get, a lot of them are negative. Um, I wanted to do a little more research and and uh, kind of pull some facts out from the data. Okay, um, so here uh, it's just a breakdown of uh, the refugee arrivals, uh, the top ten states. Most of them are going to California, also to Texas. So I think a lot of people get surprised because Texas uh, seems the most abrasive. Um, so, and then it's Michigan, Illinois, Arizona. Again, Arizona, okay, we hear about the sheriff over there. Um, and uh, he's, uh, he's, he's made a lot of waves in the press uh, because a lot of people think he has a lot of racist attitudes towards migrants. Okay, um, so let's talk about the Syrian, the breakdown of Syrian refugee arrivals in the U.S. Um, about 56% are under 20, 30% uh, age 21 to 40, 12% uh, age 41 to 64, and about 1% over uh, 65, just to give you an idea. It's not very many. Yeah, it's not very many, I'll get to <laughs> that. Okay. Um, the breakdown is uh, about 47% female and about 53% male. Okay. Um, so it's, it's uh, quite a contrast to what you'll see in the media for Europe. You know, you'll see a lot of uh, women and children most of the time. Uh, but it's about, I'd say it's about, uh, even for Europe, it's about 60% male. And I'll go into a little more statistics on that. Okay. Uh, let's go ethnicity and religion. 87% um, Arab, the Syrian refugees that come over to the U.S. 10% Kurdish. 3% uh, other, like they could be Christian or some of the other ones. 3% uh, Christian, 93% 93, 93 Muslim. So most of the uh, refugees that come over are Muslim and migrants. Okay. Uh, let's look, talk about their education. Okay. Um, so most of the students playing the country are students under 35. So a lot of them are educated. Um, and they have, in the U.S., the Syrian immigrants that come over, they have higher edu edu educational attainment than the general foreign-born uh, population. So they're fairly well educated uh, when they come over here. Uh, so that goes against a lot of the prejudice ideas of lumping a lot of them as, uh, you know, barbarians or what have you, and it's, it's really disgusting. Okay. Um, a uh, problem with their education is a lot of them have tertiary education, college educated. They could have their master's degrees. They could have. They could be doctors, lawyers, but unfortunately, they have no academic papers. Okay, and that's a really big problem uh, for the ones that are immigrating. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, um, and then you also have 26% uh, um, over the age of 28 have not completed high school. So uh, they're not all educated, but a lot of them are compared to uh, uh, the other foreign-born population, refugees that come over to migrants. Okay. Um, and um, the children, and so uh, I'll get over the vetting process in a little bit, but the children that come over, um, they go years without um, education or any kind of formal schooling uh, before they get sent over uh, to the U.S., if they do get sent over with their parents. So uh, they're usually about four or five years behind. It's a really big issue. And um, another problem with that is uh, they have to work because a lot of the countries that they're in, uh, they're not allowed to work and make money. They have to work. Uh, there's a lot of child labor, and that's a big violation, um, especially even in Turkey, who's reportedly receiving the most money from the EU. Okay, uh, let's talk about the English language. Um, the motivation to learn English is extremely high. Okay. Um, and uh, so what the sisters tell is that uh, many uh, Syrian refugee women do not speak English well. They're very low English proficiency. And, uh, let's talk about economics. Okay, um, and uh, this is what I pulled out of the, what I read. 
So the labor force participation rates are very low for Syrian women, um, and uh, for the USA as well as around the world. Okay. Um, and um, and uh, it's also language development is one of the key factors for integration for economy and society. Um, and uh, many of the recent refugees are from the wealthier, educated part of Syrian society. I mean, as you see in the news sometimes, uh, you know, a lot of them will have nice cell phones. But the thing is, is that they've spent all their money just to get out of Syria. So they might be wealthy and, and, and educated. That was before, but they come over and they have nothing again. They, uh, they have a lot of mental health problems. Shame and guilt from uh, torture and sexual violence. I actually have a Syrian refugee in one of my classes. And uh, it's hard for him sometimes to even be in the class because he feels claustrophobic. Okay. Um, they have a lot of somatic symptoms that, uh, that uh, reflect their, their, uh, uh, their mental anxieties. Okay. Um, they feel a lot of isolation from their experience, a lot of stigma, especially women, okay, who many times have been uh, um, assaulted raped, okay, um, and it have, it's occurring, unfortunately, a lot in the refugee camps. They need to be protected. Okay, uh, PTSD and depression. Okay, um, Seventy-five percent of the children have experienced a death in the family, so the parents have to make up for that and help them to give them support. Okay, uh, crucial takeaways that I thought were really important. Um, so, uh, female family members, uh, uh, I, I because of uh, sexism, um, the, the, the culture, they, they don't work, uh, they're not expected to work. It's getting better, but a lot of refugees that come here, uh, uh, they're not expected to work. So it hurts them because they, they need another breadwinner in the family. Um, and uh, they're prone to isolation. So it's like you stay at home, you take care of the kids. But, and I think that's another reason why they don't, they're not very language proficient. Okay, and then uh, the U.S. vetting process, I just want to, I didn't want to go through the whole process, but it's the strictest vetting process out of any of the migrants that can come in. It's, it's, uh, they go through three different levels of, uh, of security agencies, um, and they get actually interviewed uh, in uh, Syria or the other country that they're trying to immigrate from. So we have teams going out to actually interview them in person. Okay, so it's, it's not like they're just coming over and it's very lightly layered and I hear a lot of complaints um, in the news and even from my own friends about how lackadaisical the, it may be. So, uh, and also the U.S. is only focusing on children, women, and the elderly, okay, which I think is also a little bit of a mistake because of how highly educated uh, some of the refugees that want to come over to the U.S. So I think that's a big problem. Um, and also they're focused on victims of, of violence and torture. Okay, um, and then they, uh, the UN is actually the liaison that helps uh, uh, pick them up and vets them as well. So there's multiple layers. Um, okay, some issues to think about. Um, I think uh, female Syrian refugees, uh, they need some kind of empowerment program. That's what I got a lot out of it. Um, because of uh, uh, traditional gender roles in the society, uh, they, they don't work, and I think it's gonna hurt future generations for their daughters. Okay, uh, maybe there could be some kind of uh, self-help groups uh, that can be implemented in a lot of the adult ESL programs. Um, and uh, instead of focusing on immediate employment, which, uh, you know, I work at Cyber, it seems like they focus on immediate employment. You get to work as fast as possible, um, somehow, maybe develop more specific programs for those refugees who have higher qualifications. Somehow speed track them so that if they're a doctor, uh, maybe go into a special program where they'll learn uh, the proper English so that they can function as a doctor in the U.S. And that's not happening. It's more like, okay, we're going to try to make you go into the workforce as fast as possible. Um, and it doesn't work. Okay, and then they become disillusioned. Um, and uh, one thing that, just real quick, um, Another, I took another direction in the research is uh, um, these, uh, the young people, a lot of young people who have, who have, uh, who are, are uh, being turned into ISIS and being fanatical, and, uh, but 
There are a lot of parallels between gangs, so that's the next part of my research. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of stuff to cover, uh, but thank you very much for listening.